Hey guys, Average Youth Minister here. Today I'm going to tell you how to write your own creative object lessons to help your audience stay engaged with your talk and help apply the truths that you're teaching to their lives. Let's go. Now, when I say an object lesson, I mean just something creative, something other than just talking that gets your point home to your students. And I really think that there are three big ideas of how and why we use them. All right, reason number one that I think to use object lessons is probably the most obvious, and that's to drive home a point. You've made a really great, amazing point, and you wanna make sure that students remember it. So you use an object lesson to drive home this point. Let me show you one of the things I've used recently. Here is my cabinet of all of my fun stuff. You can't quite see it in yet. I have multiples of these cabinets, but um, here is an object lesson that I used not long ago. These are crosses, if you can see that camera zoomed in on them. I bought a 3D printer and was having fun playing with my 3D printer. So I gave one of those to my students. I gave them some Play-Doh, actually I think I gave them some modeling clay, and I said, hey, press the clay down into the mold and see how the cross is shaped into the clay to, into the Play-Doh. Now I was talking about how you need to be conformed to the image of Jesus and conform to the image of the cross. And so that point was driven home with that object lesson. At the end of the day, I was able to print enough of those that I sent them home, one home with everybody, uh, and they were able to take those home, and so that's another cool way to use an object lesson. But the idea was that the object lesson drove home the point. Now, that's not the only reason why we do object lessons. There's still a couple more. Let me talk about the other ones. All right, so I'm standing here at my junk closet, my youth closet, it's kind of where I store everything, all my games and such, and to tell you about the second big reasons why you should have object lessons. And this one might hurt your pride a little bit, but honestly, your audience has a short attention span and you're not always going to be able to keep their attention just with your words. And so one of the big reasons why I use object lessons is just to break up the monotony of a lesson. Now I will try to make sure that these lessons have something to do with the talk that we're doing, but honestly, a lot of times the activities are just to get students up and moving and involved for a moment to kind of break up the whole flow of me talking, me talking, me talking, and they get less and less and less and less focus. You do an object lesson so that people will get engaged in the lesson again. And so a couple of ideas for that. Most of the time we will play a game of some sort. A lot of times, uh, if you're gonna do an object lesson just to break up the monotony, it's nice to just bring a couple of people on stage. You just call for a couple of volunteers. You bring a couple of people on stage, uh, either have a competition where it's guys against girls or one side against the other side, and they're competing against each other. Or you can actually uh, use your whole audience, get them up, get them moving, play another game in the middle of your lesson. I know sometimes it's hard to kind of transition in and out of those kind of spaces, but if you realize and know that, hey, I'm not gonna be able to keep their attention this long, come up with something great to do in the middle. It'll help them kind of refocus back on what you're doing. As a rule of thumb, I like to, when I'm prepping a lesson, uh, look at maybe every 10 minutes or every two points come up with something new for them to do. Some kind of object lesson, something to break it up. Sometimes that's a big game, sometimes it's just it's something as simple as they're gonna answer questions by writing, but I'm gonna stop talking every 10 minutes or so. So I'm gonna dig in my closet here, see if I can't come up with some ideas. Uh, this bucket, this ball has a number on it. That's a five and a four and all those kind of things. Uh, what I did with those is we actually played a question relay where they had teams and they had three buckets of balls. They had an A, B, and C bucket for each team. Uh, and then they had the questions number one, two, three, four, and five. And so they would be asked a question by a proctor or on a sheet of paper and the questions had three answers, A, B, or C. And they would try to throw the, the right number into the right bucket. Now, uh, at the end, you kind of figure out, okay, you pull them out and see, make sure that you know that in the A bucket there should be one, four, and seven, and in the B bucket there should be whatever numbers, two and seven, and I said seven times, two and six, and in the C bucket there should be some numbers as well. But the cool thing about this is, is that you can immediately test what you've just been teaching, but you can do it in a way that's fun, and there are pitching balls and they're bouncing everywhere and if you don't know the answer it's no big deal because everything's kind of crazy but you're immediately te uh, testing on what you've just taught and that's a great way to break up the monotony with a big everybody game. Here's a, an object lesson to, uh, that just brings a few people on stage. I have a great big ball, some buckets, 
Uh, get a couple people on stage. By the way, if you don't have these balls, these are amazing. Uh, it's hard to hurt somebody with them because it's hard to get a good grip and throw them hard. Uh, they're cheap uh, and they bust fairly regularly. So you have to kind of keep a good uh, stash on hand. But love these balls, big balls. You can get them from uh, Walmart or somewhere else. Uh, but grab one of these and a bucket or whatever size ball you have and get two people to go back to back like this. Link arms, put the ball there. Give them a distance either across your stage or across your room. They have to go and drop the ball into the bucket. Uh, the bigger it is, the harder that will be. Um, again, maybe if you want to have two couples to do a race or whatever, you can do that. And this is a great way to talk about cooperation, talk about working together as a church, talk about uh, hitting your target, all kinds of different ways you can use uh, something like this, which doesn't really drive the point home as much as it just kind of continues to reinforce what you're talking about. And it gives something as a, there's a break in the conversation so that people can refocus and get back into what you're talking about. The third really great reason to use object lessons is to give a touch point for your different types of learners. Now, if you've done any kind of learning about talking or teaching or those kind of things before, you've heard about these different types of learners. There's kinesiology, I don't even know if that's a word, and auditory, I don't know all the words, but I do know this. Some people remember things better if they have something to touch. Some people remember things better if they have a way to speak and answer questions. Some people remember things better uh, if it's in a song or, or if maybe they get to create or draw. And so one of the reasons why I do object lessons is to think about creating something for all of these different types of people. They're not happening in every lesson. I don't do something in each time for each type. But over the course of, say, a month, I want to make sure that I have done at least one thing for every different type. So, for instance, I have my big ball of pipe cleaners here. And it, for your guys who like to touch things and create things, you give them four or five pipe cleaners and say, hey, design whatever it is you're talking about. Uh, you know, maybe it is... Uh, you make a machine out of your pipe cleaner or maybe it is what I think I used this big ball for was uh, Make the tallest structure that you can make and then when they were done making a structure We talked about how you had to have a good foundation and that makes a big deal. The other thing I have here is uh, I have a big bowl of Sharpie markers uh, and the cool thing about Sharpies is they're fun and I love my big bowl of it, but we like to let kids draw as much as possible. It's a, a nice way to let your some of your quieter students, some of your more students who are inclined to draw, be involved and sometimes they like to share things. It's not always the kids who are very talkative, who are good artists and so this kind of lets new students, new people come and be a part of that. Uh, so some of the ways I like to use, incorporate drawing into what I do is do a three panel cartoon and ask them to come up with a discussion between two teenagers that explains this point. Or uh, say maybe draw what it means that God loves you or draw what you think this person is feeling. Those kind of ideas are what I like to ask people to do and I don't spend a lot of time on that. One of the tips, just a quick free tip uh, for drawing things is I give people smaller pieces of paper. I don't normally give them a great big piece of paper because a lot of times when people see a big piece of paper, they get nervous. They're like, I can't fill all this up. Give them something small, lets them kind of focus a little bit more. And they are able to fill that whole space up and they're always proud. We always give a chance for whoever wants to, to share their work. First with a neighbor, if we have a large group, to share with your neighbor and then a few people to share with the whole group. So I think those are three reasons why you need to have object lessons. You need to have object lessons because Jesus did it, but you need to have object lessons because they drive home your point. You need to have object lessons because it breaks up the lesson and helps people to stay engaged a little bit better. And you need to have object lessons so that you engage all three different types of learners. So now let's go and let's look at five quick tips about how you can create your own wonderfully awesome object lessons. The first tip is this, you need to practice. Now I know that's not the easiest, greatest tip in the world. You're hoping to have something that would just really blow your mind. But the first tip really is that you need to practice. And by practice, I mean you need to give yourself a mission to come up with five object lessons every day. Or maybe you say, I'm gonna go to Walmart and I'm going to walk around and do nothing but come up with object lessons. Here's a couple that I found just in my office. This has been in my office forever. It came from the movie. Um, 
you bought it and you got popcorn in the thing. Uh, but anyway, and so I was looking around my office trying to think of just practicing, just practicing object lessons. And I thought about this, he doesn't have anything in his head. And so uh, it would be really neat. You bring him on stage, you open it up and you write down whatever it is. You say, you know, you need to put good things in your mind uh, so that you can, you know, whatever your mind thinks you do. And so you write down good things to put in your mind, Bible study, and you put it in his head or you write, you know what I'm saying? focus on God and put it in his head, whatever. And so then he's like, yeah, you have all these things and it's important to stuff your brain with those. That was something that was sitting around in my office. Uh, and you, so you see, you walk around and you just practice. You pick up something and say, well, what truth from the Bible can I teach using this? So my second big tip for creating your own amazing object lessons is to just lean into the cheese factor. Now I know you want to have something that's amazing and memorable and you can tell your friends about and you can write about it on your blog and it's this great, you know, will change the world with your truth, but honestly, most of the time, they're just going to be cheesy. So lean into the cheese factor. Don't be afraid of the fact that they're going to be silly. Silly is memorable. One of the things I did one time, this is mustard here, um, I was talking about how in Ephesians, he talked about God has lavished his grace on us. And so I, I gave, uh, there were two hot dogs, cooked hot dogs there uh, on a bun, and I brought two students up, and I said, okay, now this is a little mustard. And I sprayed a little mustard on their hot dog. And I said, now this is enough mustard. And then I went, this is a lot of mustard. And then I just covered the whole thing with mustard. And I said, now this, this is lavished. And I lavished mustard on top of the hot dog. And then I had two people, uh, of course, try to eat it because that's half the fun. And then because I'm a youth pastor, I said they had to eat it without using their hands. Again, it was silly. The whole idea is not a very, you know, I'm saying theologically great idea. You know, you pour mustard on the hot dog. But seriously, I had one of those kids who was an eighth grader when they ate the hot dog, graduated. He said, do you remember that time that we were talking about God's grace and how it was lavished on us and you made us eat those hot dogs? She may have said it actually in the reverse. She may have said, do you remember the time that you made us eat those hot dogs because we were talking about lavished? And so that idea stuck with them because silly is memorable. So don't be afraid to lean into the cheese factor. Be as silly as you want. Pull out your puns, pull out your dad jokes, and then when you do, laugh along at yourself. Don't try to act all, oh my goodness, this is the greatest thing ever. Laugh with it. Wink at the audience. Be ironic with what you're doing. It's fine. Lean into the cheese factor and people will remember the things that you are presenting to them and the object lessons that you're teaching. All right, tip number three, games are great. Games involve everybody in your group, they get everybody up and moving, and there's some really great games that teach a lot of really great points. I've got my chair set up in a circle here because I love circle games. Probably my favorite game is a game I never, or someone in the middle, so something they've never done, and some people on the outside tell things they have done. We just use that to talk about how some of the things people have never done is tell their friends about Jesus, and we need to change that. And so we talk about, we use it, we play it, quite often and sometimes it just breaks down barriers and sometimes it's part of your lesson but games are an amazing way to get people to do things they normally wouldn't do to get people involved in ways they normally wouldn't get involved and it's also a way to get people interacting with people that they don't normally interact with and so games are a great way to bring your youth group together or your student group or your children's group or whatever together as well as to reinforce the things that you're teaching about so Go look up some really great games and use them, incorporate them, and then come up with your own points for them. Tip number four is optic lessons are important, so don't be afraid to go big. This is an object lesson that our pastor used in big church. You see, he made it so big that it doesn't actually even fit in the room that we store it in. Normally it's laying down. I just picked it up for you guys. But object lessons are important, so don't be afraid to go big. Object lessons are worth your time. They are worth your resources. They are worth spending time getting ready. A lot of times people think that the object lessons are just kind of the throwaway things at the end. But honestly, it's the object lessons that you teach that people are going to remember. So take time to make them good. Take time to make them memorable. Spend the resources to give something to every kid. Spend the $25 it costs to get a nail for everybody. Spend the little bit of extra time it takes to make something that everyone gets to take home. Object lessons are worth 
the effort. That leads us to number five. Evaluate the importance of the object lesson before you invest in it. Now, I know I just said go big, and you should go big, and object lessons are important and valuable. But before you put too much time or talent or especially resources into something, make sure that it's actually what you want to say and that, it's, that it is as valuable as what you're putting into it. Object lessons are vitally important, but they're not more important than your family. They're not more important than making relationship with students. They're not more important than telling people about Jesus, although they are a way to tell people about Jesus. But object lessons are valuable, but they're not the most valuable. So figure out where you're spending your resources, where you're spending your time, and evaluate the importance that this object lesson is going to have with how much time you're spending on it. For instance, a game that's kind of a throwaway thing that nobody's really gonna remember, that doesn't have a whole lot to do with your lesson, you're just doing it to get people active, is probably not a good way to spend a lot of money and resources. But something that really drives home the point, like when we were talking about earlier, those little things where you molded the clay and they got to take it home, that took a lot of time to 3D print all of those, but it was worth it because it was driving home the point. I evaluated how much it was worth and that's how much effort I put into it. As you can see, object lessons are really important no matter who you're teaching. And they're really not that hard to create. You just kind of follow these five steps. You practice a lot. Just do them over and over and over again. You lean into the cheese factor. Don't worry if it's silly. Silly is memorable. Play games. Games are great and they are worth it. Go big. It's important to have a good object lesson, so don't be afraid to invest resources in it. But at the same time, the last thing is this, is evaluate and see just really how much it is worth before investing too much time down that road. If you do those things and if you've planned your lessons early enough, I think you can come up with some really amazing object lessons. Let me know in the comments some of the ways that you have prepped object lessons, maybe a really great object lesson you used in the past. Let us know about that. Uh, also, we'd love to just hear about any other things you got going on. Be sure to subscribe here. Uh, this is the first of what I hope are a bunch of these how-to videos. Thanks for taking the time to watch through to the end, uh, and I will see you the next time I get an idea of things I want to create. Thanks.